thanks for having me here. Thanks to the uh, UCSD and the CWC. Is everybody still awake out there? Yeah. It's late in the day on the second day. And, uh, so let's, uh, let's do something a little different with this presentation. So I want to talk about the most pressing use case for uh, 6G technology. So uh, some of you may know about us. I'm just going to run through a little bit of corporate facts. Some of you may not. Uh, BDI, we make a, a, we're one of the leading millimeter wave and terahertz test and measurement companies. Um, we make systems uh, like extension modules for BNAs that allow you to do terahertz type measurements. Um, we started by making mixing and multiplying diodes for radio astronomers. That's why diodes are in our name and are one of our core competencies. Today we deliver uh, components and test and measurement systems from uh, 26 gigahertz all the way up to 3 terahertz. Uh, we're privately held, 80 employees, 20,000 square feet, all in Charlottesville, Virginia. We have over 1,000 millimeter wave and terahertz systems in the field and hundreds of customers in over 40 countries. We're channel partners of Keysight, thank you very much. And uh, we have exclusive distributors in uh, Japan and China and Peru for distributors in many other countries. So just a little uh, relevant background here. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> Malcolm asked me to be on the panel. He said, go crazy. And I'm kind of good at that sometimes. So uh, I thought about it a lot and figured, uh, let's have some fun and do something a little different. Um, and uh, you know, I really tried to think about it. And People have been talking about we're all we just started 5G. What do we really need 6G for? What is something that actually would be a good uh, use case for 6G, or maybe just a component of 6G with us in terahertz communication? So I've been an NFL and Pittsburgh Steelers fan for as long as I can remember, and for definitely as long as I've been in terahertz. And despite what the NFL says, the following video shows a catch. That's a catch. That's a catch all day long. Now we're going to do it in slow motion. We're going to show Tom Brady. That's the catch, my friends. But the NFL said it was not. Now, I did not get per permission from the uh, NFL to show that video, so if they come and sue me, all right, they come and sue me. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that uh, the NFL rules have become too complicated uh, for current imaging positioning systems. And uh, by that, I mean visible light cameras, the cameras that they use uh, to show the games, even though they're high definition and all over the place. You can't get an accurate position on the ball. Additionally, and moving on to other things besides just this call not going in my team's favor, uh, fans don't like CTE, all the concussions, the uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy stories. Um, sorry, I'm not a, a biologist and I can't say that very well. Um, they don't like to hear about players dying. Um, and in addition, it deters younger players from getting into the game and uh, becoming college players, high school players, and eventually NFL players. Additionally, everybody continues to want a more immersive experience, uh, regardless of what sport you're watching, be it uh, international football, basketball, or football. You know, if these problems aren't solved, the NFL is going to die, and that will likely suck away my will to live. So how do we solve this? Well, it's 6G and terahertz to the rescue. So everybody probably remembers this uh, classic Mattel uh, football game. I thought I'd use it as my stadium. So how do we uh, get uh, terahertz uh, to save 
to save the day. Well, let's pick 300 gigahertz. Uh, a lot of people will say it's the top of the uh, millimeter wave spectrum or the beginning of the submillimeter wave spectrum or it's smack down in the middle of the terahertz spectrum. Choose your definition. But let, let's pick that. And then uh, let's give us 20 gigahertz of bandwidth uh, to do not only communications, but some radar. And then let's line the stadium with phaser antennas. Put them all over the place. Uh, maybe not just around the stadium, put them on the field. Basically saturate the stadium with 300 gigahertz, 20, band, 20 gigahertz bandwidth antennas so that we can do some of the following. Using the antennas, transmitters, and receivers, accurately position the ball and everything else with radar. That way, we don't get a call like I just showed you in the previous video because everything has been explicitly positioned all over the field. The next thing that we can do is, in combination with that radar, use near zero latency communications. I think I saw in the previous slide deck from Charlie, uh, less than uh, 100 uh, microseconds, or maybe even lower than that. You've got 20 gigahertz of uh, bandwidth, 300 gigahertz. Communications to uh, have player collision avoidance. We talk about automotive uh, uh, vehicle avoidance. Well, let's have collision, uh, player collision avoidance, where we're basically uh, have the player's tra trajectory on the field, and if they're going to run in into each other with their heads down, we give them a signal beforehand so their heads pop up and they don't kill themselves, which generally they don't have, you don't have player deaths, but you certainly have really catastrophic injuries about every season in the NFL. Finally, uh, we, you can, with this amount of bandwidth, up to this frequency, with this big pipe, you can stream the highest definition video from any of the 106 players that are on the field to any fan in the stadiums, making a totally immersive experience uh, and increasing the um, prestige of the NFL. So how, how are you gonna do this? We'll just do this, we'll just slow the facts, right? So the NFL was uh, $15 billion in revenue for 2019 with a goal of 25 billion uh, by 2027. So a billion dollar industry here. Top players are paid in the 20 to 40 million dollar per year range. Tom Brady paid him, is in that range. <laughs> there are 32 uh, teams and stadiums with completely defined characteristics. So, kind of in the same way that uh, Verizon kind of went into millimeter wave with fixed wireless access, you've got a completely definable situation to, as a test bed for uh, this terahertz uh, radar and communications. And the challenge is, could you develop a terahertz uh, comm radar system for the cost of a leading player's salary? Or even, say, for 10 play, uh, leading player's salary? Um, not going to put up 250 million euros is what's being funded uh, by the 6G initiative in Finland. Well, that was uh, uh, Alex Rodriguez, albeit a baseball player's salary over 10 years, $250 million. So how do we enable it? What is, the, what is the, in my view, one of the primary challenges for uh, terahertz and 6G devices? And it mostly involves the packaging. And that includes things like uh, attenuation in connectors, uh, parasitic reactances due to the dielectric material, and um, the proximity that you can get your amplifiers, filters, and the rest of the circuitry to elements uh, in the packages uh, in the ICs. So in the test and measurement in aerospace and defense uh, industries, uh, we solved this through by primarily using uh, metal packages and chip of wire construction. But we all know that that is way too expensive uh, for commercial and consumer devices. So what do we do? Well, in the, and I'm stealing some slides from uh, some other presentations, uh, Georgia Tech and Corvo here. But one, we need to, uh, as we go up to uh, the terahertz frequencies, we've got to use the best tech for the spec. And on the left, we're showing uh, some FT and FMAX for existing device technologies 
who includes ammonium phosphide and GAN. And then on the right, uh, we're showing uh, different technologies uh, to be used here in Bio-G that include CMOS, SIGI, uh, GAS, and GAN. In my view, one of the key enablers for this device technology is going to be the more than more. And more than more meaning the uh, heterogeneous integration or packaging effort. And we're already seeing that in all the watches that everybody's wearing in the audience. Um, this is one of the early versions of the Apple Watch watches where a lot of the uh, ICs are being packaged in a, a, a heterogeneous type of environment. And you know this is currently in production, currently being done. It's a, this advanced advanced packaging. Um, it's also called heterogeneous integration, and um, you know it's being talked about in the trade press all around. Uh, Gerhard Beckweiss at the Brooklyn 5G Summit was talking about stacking of uh, different IC layers uh, to enable this terahertz uh, technology. Uh, get uh, Websites like Semiconductor in, uh, Engineering talking about uh, that Moore's Law now requires this advanced packaging. And then Intel, who spoke here, uh, their view of the chip, chip revolution, which is more of this advanced packaging uh, to enable uh, terahertz. So in summary, I think I've uh, clearly defined the most pressing use case <laughs> for uh, terahertz technology with a straightforward uh, source of funding. Um, anybody in the audience have Jerry Jones or the Dallas Cowboys email? Uh, we can uh, email him straight away. Uh, and I think I've addressed the primary device issue for terahertz electronics, which is uh, getting them on the path to more than more and heterogeneous integration. Um, let's save the NFL with terahertz. Thank you very much.